here are the features of a specular XRR pattern so you know what to look for. Again, it's a two theta omega scan. Our X axis is two theta. We're looking at a log of the intensity in count. At high angle, right at zero, we're looking at part of the direct beam, very high intensity and it drops out very quickly depending on the width of the beam. As the X-ray beam is completely externally reflected from the surface, you can see there's a uh, sort of a mesa area to the top of the plot out to almost uh, 0.8 degrees, two theta. And then we hit the critical angle and that's related to the density. And it's in fact proportional to the square root of the density, which is important to keep in mind. If you're trying to make a set of test wafers and you want to vary things in your process so you can actually see this critical angle changing, you need to keep in mind that it's not a, a linear relationship, it's actually a square root. The slope of the plot after the critical angle is related to roughness. Uh, the fringes we see on this, because there is a thin film, are related to thickness. And again, the distance between them is inversely related to the thickness of the actual film. The amplitude or the depth of the fringes is related to a couple of things. One of them is density contrast. So if the film layers or the film and the substrate are very different density, these fringes tend to be deeper. And if the resolution of your system is better, these fringes also tend to be deeper. On the far right, we have the background level. And I do want to say thank you to Alexa for allowing us to use this pattern as an example of an extremely high quality XOR scan that we took for them because of the extremely high quality of their particular films.